So Namaskar everyone, I am Dr. Manish Yadav and today we are going to discuss something very important. We are going to talk about potency. Now potency is such a subject that I have found that many of the homeopaths, many of my colleagues and friends and students, even my teachers I found out that there is this lot of confusion. Lot of confusion about which potency to give in what case, when to use high potency, when to use low potency. As much uh, in all lectures and seminars, this is one of the questions which is frequently asked. I also keep getting these questions from my students many a time. So I just thought of making a video of it. Of course, I have spoken about it in my lectures and talks. But let's talk about potency to today and let's get, get this thing out of our mind and let's have some clarity about this. Okay. So I would urge that please listen to this audio very carefully because if you listen to what I am trying to say right now, uh, I think your 80 to 90 percent question about potency selection is going to be solved completely. It means this question is not going to come to you any time in your mind. That's that's guarantee what I am trying to say. So why there is confusion so much? Because people are there. Some people will come and tell you I use high potency. In the same case, some people will say I use low potency. Some will say I use LM, some will say dry, some will say you know water dose. Now what is the problem right? The problem is then the solution for this, the real answer is it is individualization and whatever you feel like you should do and try and test. But this creates a lot of confusion in clinicians. I also had a lot of confusion regarding potency but slowly and steadily going through the literatures and my own experience and learning from my teachers this query is completely solved. So I'm going to share you about exactly what uh, has to be there, what points has to be there to select the potency. <clears throat> so first of all, when we say that potency, potency is a second thing, of course, you know, the remedy has to be right. If remedy is not right, then potency does not matter. So I'm assuming that the remedy selection is proper. And now we talk about potency. In college, we learn something very important. In a medical college, we learned something very important. What we learned about potency is that higher the susceptibility, higher the potency, lower the susceptibility, lower the potency. Now, what does that mean? I could never understand in my college days what exactly this means. Of course, there are definitions of susceptibility. We are not going to talk about that. But how do I connect with this? How do I know in my patient the susceptibility is high or susceptibility is low? So susceptibility, the definition is that it is the power to react, to adapt, to react basically. If my susceptibility is good, I will have my vital force is vibrant, you know, it is reacting. It is throwing out symptoms. Now what symptoms it is throwing out? The most important symptom is the general symptoms. Write it down somewhere, very important, is the general symptom. So if susceptibility is high, then in the patient you will have more general symptoms. What are these general symptoms? Means there will be a lot of modalities. Aggravation, amelioration, ailments from is very clear. You will have uh, some specific general symptoms like craving, aversion, typical perspiration, some very good menstrual symptoms, urinary symptoms, right? These are stool symptoms. These are some general symptoms. And also, when you go deeper, you might get some very good keynotes. Second thing is when, it, when we go in the mind section, in the mind section, generally the mental generals are very clear, means the remedy is very clear. Now let me point out this, let me talk about this, give me some, uh, some seconds to this topic. When we say remedy is very clear, what does it mean? Generally what we to, do is that we use to select remedies on base of a lot of thematization. We thematize, you know, uh, we put it in brackets, we put it in tables and charts and thematize drug pictures. You know, I think that is not proper. When I say the mentals has to match, means the mental symptoms that is written in Kent's, Boric and Allen's has to match. When those symptoms match, and when you read Kent's, Madre Medica, you will learn exactly what mental general symptoms are. Mental general symptoms are general symptoms like, you know, melancholia, sadness, jealousy. These are general symptoms. You know, busy wants to be. So when general symptoms are very high, means you give higher potency. Below 30, it is lower. Above 30, it is higher. So let me give you an example. I have shown this case many times and this case has helped me a lot to understand about the potency. 
like calcareous sulf when you read calcareous sulf now this remedy is being used so nicely you know we we all know about the use of the remedy plant pustular discharge suppuration remedy where vent is formed so when opening forms and no blood ah huh? remember no blood it is bland plant discharges which are coming out purulent discharges suppurative discharges offensive maybe but mostly bland you give calcareous sulf right very simple very simple so which potency you will give if you see a ulcer you see something some injury something this thing is happening after surgery or something you see on the skin exactly this is there you give calcareous sulf in low potency maybe x potency 6x 12x below 30 but if the patient if you take the case of the patient and he is in and out calcarea in and out calcarea means what he has all general symptoms of calcarea car what are general symptoms of calcarea car he is chilly mental symptoms horrible start so these affect him prick of a needle he is scared of then what are else slightest exertion causes profuse perspiration physical he is very weak you know there's no power in it those symptoms are there in past you find out he loves eating chalk and you know all those undigestible things if it is a female extremities are cold right any excitement causes menstruation these are keynote and general symptoms if you find these symptoms in the patient then your calcarea self at 6x and 12x will not do much good to the patient rather you should go 1m and 10m few doses and the complete patient will be completely better right so another example is iris like suppose iris vesicular now iris we know iris is a remedy for pancreatic inflammation we use it in many cases pancreatitis uh, ca pancreas pancreas so many places we use you know tumor in pancreas so when you give iris just on the basis of organopathy just organ is in your mind and you are just giving to target the organ nothing else then you give low potency that's where the role of mother tinctures come in so mother tinctures basically we use in those cases where organopathically you are giving a remedy now the same iris if you get some good mental general symptoms by the way iris and lot of mother tincture remedies are not proved well hence we do not know the medicine but there are many medicines there are many mother tinctures that we use who has got some very good mental general symptoms or keynote when you get those keynotes then you go higher you don't go lower another example i give you is agrimony now this i learned from my my teacher my mentor dr sunil marsarda he taught me this very nicely agrimony is actually a backflower remedy and you know the indications you can go and read the indications it is used in a in a very specific manner but you know what you go and read pulford he says smiles mask the trouble exactly like ignatia it is but they will be always smiling they they will fighting enjoying but inside there is lot of grief inside they want to die but outside they are smiling so we tend to give ignatia many times agrimony could be the remedy now when you get this totality the mental gen general symptoms the proving symptoms rather the proving general symptoms then i will not give agrimony in back flower or in low potency rather i will search for 200 and one tuja another example is tuja now tuja is a well proved remedy but you have seen tuja been given in high potencies low potencies maybe 6 or 12 9 maybe there are people who use x potencies also now what is the use of tuja given in x potency suppose you have a brain tumor case or any tumor which is static which is not moving Uh, you gave lot of remedies, remedies, nothing is happening, or you are giving your remedy and you want to address the local, like the tissue. You want to address, you want to give something, and in your understanding, you feel this might be thuja. This might be thuja because psychotic background, psychosis somewhere here and there. You see no other indication. Just on a idea, you think maybe psychosis, maybe for tumor. Let's give thuja just for the tissue. Then you give low potency, maybe X. 30 below 30 you know 6 9 12 c c potency or x potency but below 30 but the same patient with tumor and everything you find great history of psychosis you find left sided complaint you find you know the mental symptoms you find the psychotic symptoms thuja na all all the symptoms very good symptoms 
of tuja which is proved symptom then you cannot give low potency you have to give high potency are you there with me yeah this is very simple so remember this whenever you're giving on a dynamic plane higher potency whenever you're giving on a specific plane low potency x potency or mother pinches now boric when you read boric boric always give x potencies low potencies like right? low 6 9 12 not even 30 very rarely 30 why because when you read boric then you understand he only specifically talked about a, a tissue a disease so when you give a remedy on disease name when you give a remedy on tissue name when you give a remedy on just the pathophysiology no other indications no other characteristic indications written in bold and metallics then you give low potencies that's how Boric and even Burnett to some extent because Burnett uh, was you know he was reading uh, pharmacodynamics uses pharmacodynamics he was an allopath he was like Boric you know Boric and Clark and all those people are similar they had a lot of uh, remedies where small small remedies he used where the proving symptoms were not there so he had to rely on tissue remedies like organopathic rademacherian approach so when you your understanding is on that level you always give low potency but when dynamic level you give a dynamic level you have this let's take an example thyroidinum okay i'm just randomly whatever remedy is coming in my mind so thyroidinum a patient comes to you with thyroid and you have given a lot of remedies nothing is happening but thyroid is still there by the way i don't prescribe like this but you know people prescribe so now i can uh, say now you're not understanding anything in the case and you are stuck and you want to give something very specific and you think let's give thyroid thyroidinum now you give thyroidinum without any indication like a general symptom or any dynamic symptom indication is not there then you give thyroidinum in x potency very specific you're giving that's okay but you get a patient who comes and says i have past history of thyroid i have a lot of skin eruption in my in my family i have got uh, asthma skin diseases thyroid and then suddenly he says that you know my one test is is retracted when i when i was born it was retracted and again again it keeps coming up and down now when you read this in boric it is written in italics about the test is you know retraction when you when you read ghosh thyroid ghosh he talks about asthma and skin allergies in the past these are primary symptoms and very good dynamic symptom the proving symptoms of thyroidinum so on this basis when you want to give thyroidinum you give in high potency not in low maybe 1 m and 10 m not in low you can give but it will not touch the economy so that's how you differentiate okay next we'll talk about miasmatic uh, remedies we our videos people who are watching me they know that i talk a lot about miasms the zoic remedies alan says they see earlier i also used to prescribe no swords in low potency because that's what i had heard but after reading alan's miasm alan says that when you are giving anti-miasmatic and you're sure that this is anti-miasmatic remedy for example patient comes and i have a past history of cancer she also shows me cancer symptoms i want to give carcinosin i will give high potency he even says go very higher maybe 1m 10m cm so when you give remedies based on uh, miasms and you're clear with the miasm you give higher potency now why higher potency because when you talk about miasm miasmatic remedy these are deep impact remedies these are higher dynamic influence remedies the patient is having hu huge the base you know the soil is damaged so it will not it will take a lot of punch force to the vital force to excite it needs higher dynamic limit so more on dynamic plane more on symptoms when you play characteristic symptoms when you play and you give it you give higher potency now when we talk about miasm we are not talking about specific disease like he had this disease so this miasm he had thyroid to thyroidinum cancer to cancer no it is not miasm miasm or zoic remedies is based it, it's a very big topic but yes it is not just disease name it is being prescribed it is etiological homeopathy i have discussed this in many of my videos etiological homeopathy when you read rima handley's last letters of handman by uh, rima handley you read Alice Mahism, chronic disease, you will understand. You read Burnett's approach, you'll understand that inherent tent which is, which is there, not only from one generation, so many generations, it is carried forward. 
and now you see it in the patient and it is not a local thing it is a dynamic influence maybe more powerful influence on the economy so to kill that you need powerful jolt in dynamic potency so higher potency next we come to the point of dry doses and water doses when to use dry like some people ask how to use dry doses because uh, when i started my practice a lot of people were using dry doses and one dose maybe not changing for months and years that's how i began my practice when you read hanemann of course hanemann has propagated single dose and uh, dry doses in his aphorisms but when he came to sixth aphorism in sixth of, uh, sorry not sixth aphorism sixth edition of organon sixth edition of organon he talked about potency and he's he introduced a term that you should use it in water dilution so a potency that you take you can dilute it you can suck us you can you know give jerks and repeat it and give it faster the recovery it is not just in acute cases but also in chronic cases like suppose i want to give thuja 1m so earlier i used to give 1m one dose that's enough now i don't give like this because i saw hanuman doing this so what i do i give thuja one powder or four pills give one glass bottle and 10 times then again add water in the same 10 times again add water so only once a medicine but then adding water and giving 10 times no bottle you can give it in a jar you know cup water pills 10 times stir one spoon 10 times stir this i use it in acute with marvelous results also in chronic cases that's what exactly hanuman has said in his aphorisms of potency in sixth edition of organon so i hope this is clear so try using dry uh, try using water doses and it will help lm potencies uh, is also one of the ways which hanuman introduced on the basis of water uh, dilution lm potencies are 50 ml 50 ml ml potency it is much higher much higher but the only good thing about lm potency is that aggravation is less there are two three indications which i keep in my mind when i want to use lm potency one is slow and progressive illnesses like parkinson you know um, muscular dystrophy those type of skin ill then skin ailments where i am fearing aggravations because c potency can cause aggravations very fast lm potencies has less aggravation so when or or patient is very idiosyncratic there are patients i have some patients who who i give any remedy they will prove so i'm very cautious with them i use lm potencies and also in some cases where i feel that i need repetition frequent repetition for like in 30 days then i will use lm potencies and of course you can start with 2 4 6 8 that's on your choice so i hope uh, this potency selection uh, idea which i shared uh, will it will help you it will uh, give you lot of wisdom and you can use it you can study more and of course uh, have great results in your practice thank you very much